you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. It might be tempting to use Newton's law of gravitation to solve this question. Let's take a look at that law. According to that law, the magnitude of the force acting between two particles, the gravitational force that is, is equal to a constant times the masses of the objects divided by the distance between them squared. Now, this formula can be used whenever the masses are point particles and only one of the objects is a point particle. The other object is an extended object, and so we're not going to be able to use Newton's law of gravitation directly. What we will do instead is consider a small differential element of the rod. Now, a differential element, which is labeled dm in this diagram, is simply a very tiny portion of the rod. The thickness of that differential element is so thin that we call it dr. The mass of that differential element is so tiny that we call its mass dm. And then we'll notice that the distance from this differential element over to mass m1 is given in the diagram by lowercase r. Also notice that because we are considering just a very tiny portion of the rod, that the force that it exerts on mass m1 is so tiny that we have labeled that force df. So when we come over here to Newton's law of gravitation, instead of using a force with capital F, we're going to use df to represent that tiny amount of gravitational force that's pulling mass 1 to the right. Now also we're going to have to change this mass right here. And as noted, that mass is going to be dm, which is, again, the mass of that differential element of the rod. So we'll input that into our equation here. The trick in this question is to come up with a suitable expression here for dm. Now, before we do that, we want to note that this rod has a uniform mass distribution. So what we could say is that its linear mass density is equal to the entire mass of the rod, which is capital M as stated in the question, divided by the entire length of the rod, which is uppercase L. Now let's keep this idea on the side for just a moment. What we want to argue here is that the mass of an object could be equal to its mass density multiplied by the length of that mass. And in order to really understand that, what we'll do is take the unit of mass density, or linear mass density, which is capital M divided by L, and then we would multiply it by the length of a, the particular object, which we could call L. We could see that the L's would cancel, leaving us with just mass. So it is fair to say that mass is equal to mass density times length. So in this case, the differential mass could be set equal to the mass density of the rod times the length of that differential mass. Well, remember, the length of that dif differential mass was dr. It's a very minute length, and so we simply plug in dr for that length. So this is the expression for dm that we're going to be plugging into our law of gravitation. So here is the most suitable expression for this differential force that's acting on this mass m1. Now we don't want the differential force because that's only being supplied by this tiny portion of the rod. We want the force exerted by the entire length of the rod. And so what we have to do is actually integrate both sides of this equation. Now on the left side when we integrate df that's going to give us the total force that's acting on the m1 particle. And then integrating on the right side we simply have to integrate across the entire length of the rod. And to see that a little more clearly, let's bring in the original picture again. So here is that original diagram given in the question. And we can see that the rod begins at a length that's indicated by d, if we measure starting from this point right here. So the lower limit of integration will be d. And then as we integrate across the entire length of the rod, we would terminate right here. And this distance is actually l plus d. And so our upper limit of integration is going to be l plus d. So here is the integral that we need to compute, but before doing so, we can remove any constants. Now we know that capital G is a constant, m1 
capital M and L are also constants, so we're going to be able to remove this term right here in the green circle to the outside of the integral. And what's left to integrate is dr over r squared. If it helps with the integration, we can recall that dr over r squared would be the same thing as 1 over r squared times dr. And of course, to integrate this expression, it might be helpful to bring this r squared up to the numerator to make it r to the negative 2. Now, of course, when integrating, we're going to go ahead and add 1 to the exponent, so it's going to become r to the negative 1, and then we divide that by that new exponent of negative 1. It might be easier, instead of dividing by negative 1, just to place a negative sign in front of that r. Now, r to the negative 1 is 1 over r, so we can actually fix that up. And then we're evaluating this integral from d to l plus d, and let's not forget we have the constant in front as well. So we'll go ahead and plug in the upper limit first in for r, so we would have negative 1 over l plus d, and then we would subtract the expression we derive from plugging in the lower limit, so that's going to be negative 1 over d, Now, of course this will become plus 1 over d, so we can fix that up. And then this is all still multiplied by that constant in front. Now this could be algebraically cleaned up, but it might be easier just to go ahead and plug in the known values now. We know g is a constant equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass m1 was given to us in the question, as was the uppercase mass. And the length of the rod is given is 3 meters. And d is stated in centimeters, so we just have to make sure we convert that into meters. And so with those ideas in mind, let's plug in. And when we carefully plug that into our calculators, we should get approximately 3.0 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. So this represents the total force exerted by the rod on the mass that is marked M1.